G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And uh, today, we want to have a chat about one of my favourite snakes in the country. And that'd have to be the rough scale python. So, uh, stick around guys, we're going to have a chat about rough scale pythons. So the rough python, in my opinion, has to be one of the most interesting snakes in the country, and for a couple of reasons. The first part is their story of discovery. You see, this species was undescribed to science until about 1976, when it was discovered up in the little pockets of rainforest down in the gorges up in the Kimberley country, where up on top it's pretty dry and, and rocky, and uh, down in these deep escarpments where the water sort of dwells, somebody discovered these guys. After that, it took another 23 years, up until 1999, when uh, John Weigel and the team from Australian Reptile Park got permission from the Department of Parks and Wildlife in Western Australia to collect a couple of these guys and uh, start a captive population. Now, it took a couple of trips, and eventually they found uh, three males and two females. And every rough scale python in captivity today is descended from those original snakes. So, pretty interesting stuff. On top of that, they've got a couple of really uh, unusual features. One of the things that uh, John Weigel documented when he started trying to keep these guys at home and breed them was that uh, they have shown a, an ability to change colour. When they're active during the, the first few hours of night, they actually turn like a silvery grey. And uh, when they're dormant and sitting on their perches or hiding, they turn this sort of browny, dark grey colour again. So, uh, pretty unique. A few other pythons do it, like the Owen Pally python up in Arnhem Land, but it's still pretty cool. On top of that, of course, is the, uh, the rough scales. This is the only species in the world that we know of, the only python species, to have keeled scales. Now, a lot of other reptiles do have sort of a, a spiny or a keel type scale, such as the, the Cunningham skink or the ridge-tailed monitor, and these are all species that are generally associated with rocks. Their spines point backwards, so if they get their heads in between the rocky crevices, nothing can get them out. These guys, however, they do live in rocky areas, so it may be useful for that. They can cram themselves into somewhere and somebody can't get them out. But it's not really sort of a spine. It's actually just sort of like a bump on each one. So the other theory is that uh, it sort of breaks up their shape and their iridescence. They really blend in with that rocky environment really well. So I guess they sort of just disappear. They don't have that distinct snaky sort of... a uh, silhouette and shine. The other really cool feature about these guys is that uh, they have some of the biggest teeth of any python in the world for their size. They might only be little flailers, but these guys have big teeth. Now, often, big teeth on a python is a sign that they're a bird-eating species. They need to get through all the plumage to be able to hold onto a bird. But when they were first caught and brought to uh, New South Wales by John Weigel in the Reptile Park, they tried feeding them on birds, chickens and doves and those sorts of things, and they didn't have much luck. It wasn't until somebody offered them some spinifex hopping mice that uh, they got them feeding. And what they discovered was there's actually a species of rodent, a species of native rock rat, up in the, the Kimberley where this guy's a native to, that has its ability to shed its fur. When something grabs it, it can get away and just lose a patch of fur with a little bit of skin on it and get away. So if any other python tried to grab this particular species of rat, with normal sized teeth, it might end up with just a mouthful of rodent fur. Whereas the Ruffy, with these big long teeth that he's got, is able to get right in there, and make sure he's not going to get away. So pretty cool stuff. Now luckily today, those five that uh, the Reptile Park first collected, and then with the help of Snake Ranch and lots of private keepers and the like, have grown into thousands. So today they're actually readily available to private keepers in most of Australia. Which is pretty cool stuff, because it means that, you know, the average person interested in reptiles can have a piece of natural history in their, uh, you know, house. And uh, luckily for these guys... <laughs> and luckily for these guys, uh, while they are found in only tiny pockets, which is usually a... puts them in a precarious situation as far as conservation goes, the area they found up in the Kimberley actually is the only place in Australia that hasn't had any extinctions. It's simply so remote that nobody gets there very often, so there's been very little damage done. But still, any animal that's found in such a small area, the more backup populations we have, the better. So, really cool, really unique species. 
Now, like always, guys, if you do like the video, please hit that subscribe button, uh, leave a comment. We're trying for the rest of this year to bring out a video to you guys every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So please, leave us ideas. We're always looking for more. On top of that, uh, check us out on Facebook. We're Wicked Wildlife. And as always, guys, be nice to snakes. Have a good one and take care.